Over the last few years, especially since the release of Blender 2.8, I have been noticing a kind of wave of 3D artists, especially veteran 3D artists or those that have been fed up with Autodesk saying something along the lines of, I have used Max, Maya or Cinema 4D for over 10, 15 or 20 years and now I'm switching to Blender. It seems like everybody in the last couple of years are bending in the shape of Autodesk and other companies to join Blender. But what about some professionals who say it is just a hobbyist 3D software? How did their perspective change? Or is it just a minority that have the loudest voices? So today, we're gonna try to answer the question, why are more and more 3D artists ditching Max, Maya and other 3D software for Blender? Or are they, really? If you look at it logically, Blender can be a great choice of a 3D software for veteran 3D artists and freelance artists who used to work for clients or projects in game development, VFX, or other creative projects using software such as Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, or Houdini. Maybe not Houdini, but let's just say that for the sake of argument. Before we continue, let me tell you about CG Circuit which is a massive online platform for artists and creators that acts as a hub to learn, share, buy, and sell your assets all in one place. It offers a ton of useful content and the service offers a wide range of features, one of which is CG Circuit for Teams, which is an amazing license for schools, studios, and companies that want to add value to their staff, students, or workers. Most importantly, it is extremely affordable, and they are already working with successful studios in the industry like ILM, Animal Logic, and Sony Pictures. So, if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description down below. To be honest, I think, and many others may share my opinion, I think there was a time when Blender was not as good of a 3D software as it is today and it was looked at as not good enough regardless of the fact of being free. Back in the day, I would say at least 10 years ago, Blender was not being taken seriously by the 3D community, especially professionals, because it wasn't perceived really well. And it was not great as it is today to be honest. It had a reputation of being a 3D software for amateurs, and frankly, it does still to a certain extent in the eyes of some people. Back then, Blender had only a few but loyal users. Things, however, started taking a turn, especially after Blender 2.8 was released and the surge of attention it got. So more 3D artists, especially professionals, got interested. That was more than three years ago, but it feels like just yesterday. In my opinion, one of the best selling points of Blender 2.8 was first of all the user interface, which looks amazing now compared to the legacy software, such as the old version of Blender first of all, in addition to Max, Maya, Houdini, and Cinema 4D. To a certain extent, I feel like software such as Cinema 4D started to look like Blender at this point. What a coincidence, right? But what I think got the attention of the 3D community is the integration of EV, which is a real-time render engine that the Blender Foundation developers added to the software. So after years of development and the support it got from companies and contributors, mostly artists and small studios and small companies, Blender had many tools and features to create better 3D art. After this work funded by the aforementioned parties, Blender became equal to industry standard software or even better in some aspects. To a certain extent, other 3D artists working with other industry 3D packages started getting jealous of the rate of development and the trajectory of Blender development is taking, which is understandable to say the least. Another face of the coin is that a lot of Autodesk clients, like the users of Max and Maya, were not very happy with the rate of development in the last decade or so. Even though Autodesk has made huge leaps in the development in the recent couple of years, the lack of updates for many years prior to that, like 3ds Max's CAT animation system, which is a promising animation system that was popular in the 2010s, but lack of development was its biggest problem. Particle flow is another thing that suffered the same fate to a certain extent, but luckily an independent developer called Tyson Abili rewrote the whole software and created a revamped version of the same particle system called Type Flow, which is now the kind of official, not so official version if you know what I mean. The same also goes for Boolean modeling operations, but fortunately that changed after Blender became a problem 
for Autodesk's bottom line, especially with the new tools and features added to Blender with every release. Also, my users were suffering from some aspects of the software that were not updated enough, but Maya, I think, was getting more attention. Around the time when Blender 2.8 was released, this veteran 3D artist with 20 years of experience said, Max isn't what it used to be. It used to have some of the best modeling tools in the business, and rivaled plugins for VFX work and great workflows in general. Watching its yearly Max release only add minimal updates makes it seem as though Autodesk has Max on autopilot as a cash cow and they aren't concerned with innovation or even concerned with keeping up with the rest of the industry. I don't see this going away, and I don't see Autodesk sinking the resources required to outpace Blender or a number of software at this point. So they are just going to continue to fall further and further behind until industries stop using Max as a whole. So from what they have seen, this has changed a lot as I said in the last couple of years, because this quote is taken from a three years prior. So. Right after Blender 2.8 was released and Blender won the attention of the 3D community, Autodesk started releasing some serious updates to 3ds Max particularly, and other 3D software in general. With the introduction of new and improved modeling tools, fluid simulation tools, rendering, material editing, and more. But still, Blender looks too good for the price tag of exactly $0. But if you are in the industry like game development or VFX, or you want to join the industry, if you are using Max, Maya, Houdini or Cinema 4D, it is still a great option because it's gonna give you a lot of opportunities. And you shouldn't worry too much because if you work at a studio, they have their third-party tools and specific custom created tools that make software such as Max or Maya look great, especially when integrated with a studio's workflow. But now imagine that you are an independent 3D artist. In this case, Blender is gonna be ideal because most of what you need is packaged in one place. Great and improved render engine like Cycles, amazing real-time rendering with EV, the ability to work on different 2D animation projects, especially in conjunction with 3D using the grease pencil, which makes things look really cool and fulfills the needs of many creators and small studios. Sculpting also is something that all major 3D packages don't have. Because to be honest, software development companies see it as useless, since professional artists will use ZBrush for sculpting anyways. But for personal projects, freelance artists or small studios, Blender sculpting tools can go a long way. Also, the addition of geometry nodes and simulation nodes opened the doors for many possibilities in modeling, animation, texturing, effects, and so on, and made Blender even more attractive as a 3D package. Another pain point for non-Blender artists that may want to make them start thinking about switching to Blender is simply subscriptions. There was a time when you could buy a Max or a Maya version and use that version for many years and then pay again for a new version when you think it is worth upgrading or whatever the reason might be. For 3D artists, especially experienced 3D artists with a lot of years under their belt, this was the norm. But with subscriptions, this is not the case, not anymore. And Blender's new incarnation came around a time when subscriptions are getting out of control, which was perfect for many of those 3D artists who are tired of paying for subscriptions. However, things got worse than that. When they didn't think things can go worse, Autodesk kept raising prices for about 100 bucks each year, or about 5% yearly. For many, the price you can save on subscriptions is extra cash that you can buy assets with, materials, 3D models, add-ons, you name it. But luckily, Omidask introduced 3ds Max and Maya Indie. I'm not sure if Blender is the real reason, but the timing is very sus, if you ask me. So what do you think? On a side note, I think the majority of 3D artists that say they will switch to Blender after many years are not using it for work professionally in the industry inside a studio. I mean inside an actual studio full time. This is simply because they will have to use the 3D software that their employers chose for them for the most part. And more likely than not, they are industry standard software like Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Houdini, and so on. Also, I don't think that game developers and VFX studios, especially big ones, wait for Mami Autodesk to make tools for them. They have technical artists who develop amazing third-party tools that you can only dream to touch. 
So guys, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, talking about 3D software and the industry in general. Thank you guys very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.